In this video, we're going to take a look at using the discriminant to determine the number of solutions, the number of real solutions, in a quadratic equation. The discriminant is actually in the quadratic formula. It's this piece right under the square root here. And depending on the value of that, whether it's positive, zero, or negative, that will tell us how many solutions that quadratic equation will have. So let's take a look at what's going to happen here. It turns out that if this right here, the discriminant, is greater than zero, if it's greater than zero, then there will be two real solutions. And that makes sense because what's going to happen is we're going to get a number here. If it's positive, an example of a positive number would be 5. Then we'll have a number out here. So this number plus or minus this number is going to yield two different numbers. So that's why there's two real solutions if that number inside there is greater than 0. The second thing that can happen is that b squared minus 4ac again the discriminant could be equal to zero in that case there's going to be one real solution and the reason for that is if we notice what's going on there if it was zero huh what's going to happen so we have a number out here plus or minus zero well does it matter if you add or subtract zero no, so there's just going to be one solution that comes out of this because they're the same. Plus and minus zero are both the same, so there's one real solution. Finally, the third thing that can happen is the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac, can be less than zero. And in that case, there will be no real solutions. Now, that's where the discriminant comes in handy because if there are no real solutions and we just do this little bit of work then we save ourselves the time of going through the entire quadratic formula to find out oops there's a trying to take a negative square root and we can't do that so there's no real solution so just finding the discriminant allows us to save some work and not go through the entire quadratic formula to determine that there's no real solutions okay so let's go ahead and apply the discriminant here and see how it can be helpful to us for this first one I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna find that discriminant in order to find our discriminant we need to have our quadratic equation that we want to look at in standard form remember standard form is a x squared Oy, having trouble writing some curvy things here so a x squared plus b x plus c equals that's not a good c either come on now plus c equals zero okay so this one and actually they all appear to be in standard form so that's good we don't have to worry about that anymore we're gonna go ahead and fill in the b the a and the c into the discriminant and see what comes out alright so in this case we've got b squared so my b here is three so it's going to be 3 squared minus 4 times a, in this case is 1. So 4 times 1 times c, which is 5. Okay, so let's figure out what that is. 3 squared is 9. Then we've got minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 times 20 is minus 20. Or times 5 is 20, excuse me. So 9 minus 20 is negative 11 okay what kind of a number is that it's a negative number so if we look over here we get no real solutions and that makes sense because if we had square root there we can't do that well not without imaginary numbers but at this point we're not going to worry about those so in this case no real solutions to this equation no real solutions okay let's take a look at this next one in this one again the same process is the same fill in the a b and c into the discriminant again the discriminant is just this piece under the square root so b squared my b in this case is 10 so 10 squared minus 
4 times A, we've got a 1 for A again, times C, which is 25. All right, then 10 squared is 100. Oy. 100, then we've got minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, minus 4 times 25 is negative 100. Okay, so 100 minus 100 equals 0. Huh, what's that mean? That means that there will be one real solution. And again, it makes sense. Plus or minus zero doesn't matter. We end up in the same place. So one real solution. And also remember, if that's the case, the vertex of the graph must be on the x-axis because that's how we get the one solution. Okay, then finally, we've got this one over here. Fill in our A, B, and C. So my B in this case is negative 6. So negative 6 squared minus 4 times A is 1 times C, negative 7. Then ugh, negative 6 squared would be 36. Holy smokes, we're struggling here. My tablet's not being very nice to me tonight. 36. Then we've got negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. Negative 4 times 7 would be neg plus, excuse me, 28. Then we add those things together, and that would give us 64. 36 plus 28 is 64, which is positive. So what does that mean? There's going to be two real solutions, because if we had a square root of 64 is basically what would come out of there, which would be 8. So plus 8 would get us a number, minus 8 would get us a number. So in this case, we have two real solutions. All right, so using the discriminant can help save us time if we're asked to solve a quadratic equation because we can find out immediately without a whole lot of work how many solutions there's going to be. If it turns out there's no real solutions, we can stop at that point. We don't have to go further and do the rest of the work that's involved with the quadratic formula. It's a little bit of a time saver. Again, remember the discriminants just sitting right in the quadratic formula, right here, right under the square root. b squared minus 4ac. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math and your discriminants, and I know you'll do great.